Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this here is episode 100. (laughs) Yeah, woo! We made it. First off, I want to thank everyone who has been tuning in with me, hanging since day one. There's been, I know a handful of you that, that, Usually message or text me and let me know about the about the, the about, about the podcast and um, I appreciate it. You know the first few episodes, probably the first dozen episodes were pretty rough. Were, you know, so if you if you made it through those episodes, I got to give you props because I don't know if I could have. <laughs> A lot of ums and huhs and hesitations and but you know what I knew that. If I did this long enough, that I'll get the hang of it. Now, I'm not saying that I'm doing great now, but at 100 episodes, I'm doing a little better than I, I was the first few. And I'm hoping that within the next 100, I'll do a little bit better. And that, that's the goal, is to just keep keep it going and hopefully provide more information to you guys, whether it's to educate you on something or to entertain you at the, you know, at the least, you know? But, this episode, I had to do something a little different. A little different. It, because it's a special episode. It's a milestone for me. Honestly, I thought it, I, I knew I was gonna make it to a hundred, but I thought it was gonna be a, I thought I was gonna I was gonna it was gonna be rough. I thought it was gonna be a rough ride, and it really wasn't. You know. But for you guys who are um who've been hanging in there, um and uh, celebrating this episode with me, um, I have a guest on with us tonight, and just to help us uh, help us do this one. Let me see. Let me let me see if you guys uh, recognize uh, this person. Show me, show me you really love me. Yeah. What's up, baby? Hey. <laughs> so if you guys are not sure who that is, that is Angel from the Cover Girls, aka my motherfucking wife. Mrs. Mikado. It's Mrs. Mikado right there. So and and she came with a gift. She came with a little gift for me. I sure did. What 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 do you, what do you got here? I got some 808 beats wine. 808 beats wine. Taste, Taste the bass, baby. baby. <laughs> 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 Yo, so as you guys know, I'm not a big drinker, but she brought me out a cup, a big ass. You ready? You ready for me to pour it? Paper cup. A solo, a solo cup. You know, it's a southern thing. Yeah, but you gotta I think, have your, you I think, gotta yeah. have your solo cup. You gotta take the cork. There you <laughs> go. So um, this bottle here is compliments of Mario Pacheco, the owner of 808 Beats. If you guys do not have this wine or have not checked out this wine, you need to get it. Either hit Angel up, hit, hit me up, or hit Mario Pacheco, or um, Taste the Bass. Well, or ask Trinier about it. She or, loves it. Or <laughs> 808 Beats. Trinier knows about it. I think George Lamont just got a bottle. Lil Susie's getting a bottle in the mail now. So it's becoming a, a pretty. But there was something special about this bottle. I don't know if you guys even know this. What's, what's so special about this? Uh, that's right. It's her picture on the bottle, on the label. So it's really, really cool. And it was actually created. It was created, you know, with the freestyle uh, market in mind. It was so, you know, it, it was a combination of two two passions: a passion for freestyle, which is why Mario came to me. Uh, him and I, you know, we met online. Which again, I, I've spoken to you guys many times before. The beauty of social media is the people you get to meet, the people you get to to get to know, the people you get to hook up with and do business, and some people even marry. 
I'm not marrying. <laughs> I'm not Mario. Mario, though. But and you know, Mario came to me because of my passion for wine. <laughs> right. So that was another thing. So you know, so Angel's passion for wine, Mario's passion for. Uh, wine, Angel as an artist, me, uh, my passion for the genre, and it kind of all came together. You know what? I'm gonna taste this right now. Mmm, tastes like wine. <laughs> <laughs> I tastes don't know. Tastes like you... good wine. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's actually good. It's actually good. You know, um, it's actually really good. To tell you the truth, I did a podcast. It's a little strong. <laughs> yeah, I got, I did a podcast about the wine, and you know. I have to be open and honest. I, I mean, everybody who likes wine has loved this. I'm just not a wine drinker, but I, I like it. You, you know? don't drink anything. Yeah, I really, well. You're not, never a drinker. I'm not really a drinker. I'm not really a drinker. I like that. But I drink some Baileys. I need a designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> but, uh, so what do you think? What do you feel? You know, 100 episodes of this podcast. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Well, us, I mean, you, you, you know, you played a big role in encouraging. No, no, you know what it is? You put your mind to something and you do it. You make sure that you do it. Nothing stops you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what anybody's going through, no matter what's happening. Yeah. You still make sure you, when you commit to something, you commit to it. You know, one of the things that I do pride myself of is, is, is your work ethic. Well, Pushing through on a project. Right. Well, your work ethic. Whether whether it fails or it's successful, just the fact of taking it to the end. And I'll tell you why. Because as a kid, I always had a lot of dreams and I always started a lot of projects. And I just didn't know how to finish stuff. I really didn't know. But I would start them and then I would jump on to the next one. I would start them. And then I think as I got older, I think it really started when I started writing books. Because if there's any task in this world, it's freaking writing a novel. Oh my God, I can't believe you did. I can't believe you've done it more than once. Yeah, yeah. So you know, so taking that you to the to end. You have to be really dedicated. Yeah, well, I, I I gave you props to the podcast once before for pushing me through with the with the the first book. Because I was gonna write it and put it on the shelf. So I give you props on that. But you know what it is? The reason why I push you is because. You're so quiet around people, so they really don't know. Unless they know you, they don't know your personality. Yeah. That's why when people are seeing you do these um, these TikToks, they're like, oh, wow, Latif is going crazy. I'm like, Latif has always been like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Yo, you, 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 yo, you losing all. No, no, no. The funniest thing is when they say I'm bored, I must be bored. When am oh I bored? Oh, my God. Never. Never Neither am I. I never understood that board thing. Like, I yeah. want to call them up and say, listen, okay, this is the list of things I have to do. I'm going to give you half the list so you're not bored. Not only that, I mean, really, you know, especially. Or that I aspire to do. Not yeah. only that I like, you know, that I have to do, but that I aspire or, to do. Also, you know, not only that, even with stuff like, even with social media, you know, and it's not just about going online and browsing and web surfing and, you know, and so on. But there's a lot of things, a lot of interesting things on the internet that people could get involved with that can keep you from being bored. I'm honestly not bored. I don't like the mental restriction I have of not being able to go into danger and this, that scares me. Right. But, but you know, social media is good too, also because, you know, with the TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. you can be creative. Yeah. You know, you don't have to think about all the doom and gloom that's happening right now. Yeah. Sometimes you can just have fun and I'm getting and be that. creative. I'm getting that from a lot of the people. I'm getting a lot of people that are reaching out. <clears throat> and any of you guys who are doing that, who are reaching out, sending me messages, uh, sending me posts, telling me. And sometimes it's a private message, which I like the comments out public. Okay, so because this helps me when you do a comment out in public and you post on the comment and you say, oh, I love this, it's funny, or you make my day, da, da, da. And that's beautiful, and I never want you guys to stop that. But sometimes when you do that private message to me, it kind of touches me differently. Because there's, it's just a different level of sincerity in it. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? You know, that they're Well, think about it. All of my family is not on social media. Right. But they all listen to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They're all into your podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the podcast, you know, the podcast, I, I mean, 
I'm excited about it. I just and I send them your TikToks. So yeah, crack yeah. <laughs> so it's I mean it's cool because I do the TikToks in the daytime, I do the podcast at night. I'm writing during the afternoon. I mean, what am I not doing? You know, and I also got a lot of messages saying, "I can't believe he did that to you with the lotion on your face." I oh, can't yeah. believe, and all I can think about is that's just another day. It's like Tuesday with you. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's our relationship. We know. Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. always done stuff like that to me. It's just funny. I don't know. I don't. Know. I get a kick out of it. I yeah. think it's funny. Yeah. I mean. I mean. Listen. Listen. I. I. I can. I can never be the way I am if she wasn't the way she is. Because think about it. You know, we work together. We live together. Um, we play together. I mean, you know, we have to have raise a family together. Raise a family. Still raising a granddaughter. Yeah, raising other families. You know, <laughs> but you know, going through this stuff. So you know, and that's that's a huge, huge role and you know not everybody is that fortunate even people that are married and they're, they're happily married but you know happily married but then we're happily married but then there's this other level this other um level of of uh, relationship well i'm your cheerleader you're my cheerleader yeah yeah we you definitely know? we definitely have each other's I think back that's what it is too. we definitely have each other's back you know she knows well, you me. know what's cool too i'm not your cheerleader just because i'm your wife i'm your cheerleader because i genuinely love what you do right you know i'm right. definitely a fan right same here and same yeah. here you know and i think that's what what makes it and we compliment each other because you guys have no okay i might manage her i manage the cover girls um i play i play, play a pretty decent role in that area um uh, and that's something that people can see that most of you guys see because you see them do shows and you see them you know do photos and you see this and you see that and you know but there's a love there's there's this other area where she has my back a lot of the stuff that you guys don't get to see you guys see the final product you might see a TikTok, you might read a book you might hear this podcast but the role that she plays behind the scenes is like i is it, it, i can't it's can't even define it. It's there's just a whole. It's a different kind of piece. Babe, my head is getting big right now. Huh? My head is getting big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling myself right now. Well, you're an artist. You should. It should be big. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there's it's a whole other it's a whole other level of you know. And like I said, there's people that have great marriages and you know, but the husband does one thing, the wife does this. They come together and they have a wonderful life. What we have is very unique because we our businesses our actual livelihoods mesh they complement each other she's an artist i'm an agent so we actually work together which is how we ended and up our together. personalities mesh too because you like to joke and i like to laugh yeah you know what i'm saying right so right. that really works like even when i'm mad at you and you'll joke around so i won't be mad at you yeah. and i have to laugh she listen she has to <laughs> she has to look at my even the tiktoks she has to look at them and give them the green light before I put them out. Trust me, when you guys see those videos... Uh, you've get... done a few without telling me, and then it's been hysterical. No, no, you... And I woke up to them, and I'm like, what the hell did you do? Oh, oh. So funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So funny. Yeah, but those, yeah, those were... Yeah, but the ones that I was a little question, that I would question, you know, I would always, you know, run past you. And I, and I trust your... I trust your opinion, because I know that if it's something that you're not feeling, that you'll let me know. When have I ever told you I wasn't feeling something that you did? Uh, when? Name one. I don't remember. I don't remember. But yeah. like I said, with like with the books, we've had discussions about the books, and you've had me make certain changes. And yeah, I remember that. I, I know. I know how you'll look at a cover, or even a cover, or now nah, leave it like Let's this. Let's not get into that because you know how many times I've gave you ideas and then you came up with the idea a month later. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my God, I have a great idea. I'm like, brother, I told you that a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, so, um, but anyway, uh, but you know, so anyway, we're here, the 100th episode. Um, how many have you listened to? I have listened to a lot. Most of them? I got a little bit, most of them. I got, I got caught up though, you know, I got caught up with everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. With the baby being home from school. Yeah. She's not handling this as well as I thought she would. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. She's a little scared. She's nervous. Yeah. She doesn't understand why she can't play with her friends. Yeah. You know, she doesn't understand, you know? It's I mean, just, how do you... Lot, I don't even understand it. Yeah. You know, how can I, you know, I'm trying to explain it to her, but yeah. it's a lot. I mean, we don't know. Nobody, none of us knows, you know? I you know, I talk about it. I've, I bring it up in the podcast. A lot of people that listen, they know. Um, sometimes I don't want to talk about it, but then sometimes I have to. Right. Because this podcast is based on... My, me, of what I'm feeling, 
And even when I put the post up today about the 100th episode, I even mentioned that, um, you know, it's just my way of, because, you know, you've seen, sometimes I go to bed at night, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. My head, what do I tell you? I can't watch the news. Can't watch the news. I don't can't want, talk about anything. Can't talk about business. You basically have to watch Family Guy. I got to watch <laughs> something so stupid and yeah. silly yeah. that totally, because if I watch a regular show, it'll put me back. It'll, give, it'll do something to make me think about what I'm doing. But what's so crazy is that as soon as, um, you know, remember, we started the podcast January 1st, your birthday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. So, you know, so we started January 1st and then we went into, into this whole, this whole situation here, you know? Right. And so what I was trying to say is we went into this situation. Um, so there really wasn't that much, except for a couple of shows, there really wasn't that much, that many other things to talk about. There was <laughs> business just was like, remember it was just kicking off because we had a good beginning of the year. Right. You know, we picked up a few shows right. and things were picking back up like yeah. quickly. Like right. I, I, quickly. I and Very a quickly. lot of calls came in and I was, I was foreseeing a, a really, really nice 2020. Then all of a sudden this thing hit. And, and then at that point it was like, okay, so here's the podcast. This podcast is supposed to be about shows. It's supposed to be about situations going on with bookings. It's supposed to be about... Maybe issues I'm having but, with I mean, some of the artists. It's, it's, it is about that, right? It's about your life. This yeah. is basically about your life. This is about what's going on. Just because, you know, there's no shows right now doesn't mean that you're not still working. Right. Doesn't mean that I'm not still working. Doesn't mean that we're not working on projects that we've been working on. Right. You know, we just haven't revealed the projects, but, right. you know, we haven't stopped working. Yeah. The only thing right now is getting this baby through this. You know? How do you feel that this is gonna listen? This hasn't changed too much with us because we're homebodies. Yeah. We work from home. We do everything from home. Well, it's a mental thing for us. Like some people are physically stressed out, physically right. because they're not used to being stuck in a house. I'm more stressed out about the baby than anything. She doesn't bother me that much. Not, not. No, I'm more, I'm more stressed out about what she's going through. I mean, not because she's home, because what she's going through. I, I don't. You know? Yeah, I don't really. I don't really see. I mean, she wants to see her mom, her brothers and sisters, but um, other than that, I think she's fine. No, and she's I'm glad she's here. No, no, no. She's fine, but you know, when they're little, and you have to be the one to speak to them about things. You don't want to say the wrong thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so. That's what's. I only me bring out. up. I only bring up what she asks. Me I don't, too, but still, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, she's impressionable. She's eight years old. Right. But otherwise, I'm. I think I'm more worried about. Everybody else than myself. Of course. In this yeah. situation. Me too. I'm worried, about, I'm worried about my friends and family and fans that yeah. are in New York and LA and in Chicago and in all these places that are so congested, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that it's hard yeah. not to get through this. You know, yeah. it's hard, you know. What do you think is going on? I mean, when this is over, hopefully soon, I mean, how, I mean, how do you, do you see any kind of change within the genre, with the freestyle? Do you see anything, do you think this is going to impact anyone in any type of way? I think it's going to mellow out a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to I feel the same way. I think I feel the same way. I think you people know? are going to look at things differently. I think people are going to look at things differently. I, think people... I mean, I feel that already because I, I, have, I have artists that are reaching out to me that I haven't even had a relationship with in years. Yeah. You know? You know, just, you know, with... Almost like an apology and, you know, yeah. sorry about what I've been through. And, you know, I've never felt like I've really been through much yeah. because I always had you and, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think I've been... I wasn't worried about anything. You know, I feel... I felt... This is what I felt. I felt that I never did anything wrong. Right. And the proof is in the pudding. You know what I'm saying? I've never done anything wrong to any of these people. Right, right. So, I had a clear conscience, you know? Right, right. So, I mean, I kicked up some dirt, you know, with freestyle against phonies. But you know, a lot of the people that I actually had to attack is that wasn't. I'm not even gonna say I attacked them because I really didn't attack anyone. 
it just turned out to look that way. It just, it really looks that right. way because when people go on, let's say, freestyle against phonies, and they're like, oh, you know, I used to get that all the time. Oh yeah, you go on freestyle against phonies and you dog all these people. I say, yeah, find me a post. They came and find out one post. Well, that was the thing. We both never dogged anybody. Yeah. I said, what was the truth? Yeah. But to people, well, you know, you shouldn't say that because you know it's hurting somebody's feelings. The truth is hurting somebody's feelings, then the truth is going to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. You know? People say things to me all the time. Oh, yeah. Angel, you look fat in this show. Angel, you look... You know what, bitch? I got a mirror. I do look fat in that damn show. <laughs> I got to lay off them burgers. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. But, you know, listen, I, I felt that that, that with, with that that group, it served its purpose, but and it's going to be there, and I have no intentions on closing it. And it's always going to serve that purpose just for the freestyle genre. Um, and it, it created a lot of friction with some of the artists with me and some of the fans and people right. that I was actually cool with. Right. But I've gotten to a point where I've actually, myself, have reached out to a lot of people. And I was the first one. I know. And I you know, mm -hmm. stepped out and I apologized. And because I didn't get into this business because of that. I didn't right. come in here with hatred. I came but in see, here. See, that's what I love about you. I came in here with a lot you know, of love. I came in here with. You're willing to extend that olive branch, and you're willing to talk about things, and you're willing to fix things. I just have so much hope and so much faith in this genre that I have Absolutely. a I have a hard time even explaining it. Right. You know. But you know what? You don't have to explain it because you know why I know that because I see all these artists that right now are not doing shows, not doing too many things, calling you. Yeah. And they don't know what to do with themselves. And, yeah. and you're telling them, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Like, yeah. you know, you've always motiv motivated me to do so many things. Right, right. Different than just singing. Than yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, because you're, you're an artist. No, right, artists, we're artists. Yeah, the so artists. So there's so many things we can do besides right. getting up on that stage and singing. Yeah, artists is, is not just, you know, you see, my, I spend so much of my life. You know what? I, you know what an example is? George Lamont, the mm. boy could cook. The boy loves to cook. And he paints. And he paints. Yeah. And he paints. Very talented dude. Yeah. It's very talented Go and do what you got to do, man. Yeah. And, but I, I think that's where a lot of the artists is. I'm sure a lot of these artists have, you know, you know skills and talents that Suzanne. we don't know. Suzanne would be the best, like, life coach. Yeah. I think. Okay. She, she knows so many things. Like, people don't really speak to Suzanne, so they don't know how smart she is and how bright. Like, anything yeah. I want to know, I'll reach out to Suzanne. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you, know, you do too. Yeah, yeah. She's a very She's like smart my girl. online doctor. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, exactly. Oh, Suzanne, I got, I got this pimple like right on my butt cheek. Like, <laughs> how do, what do, how, where did it come from? How can, what do I do? And she has that soothing, like the way she speaks to yeah. people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, oh no. She listen, would be just awesome. That's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, you can bust it if you pinch it. <laughs> and it bust, you'll be okay. You know, just put, and then put a band aid, you know. But uh, but yeah, but there's a lot of a lot of the artists, and you know, that's can, you know the way she she has such a great marriage, yeah. she has such a great relationship with her children, she has such a great relationship with her parents, you know. Yeah. She can actually help a lot of people. Yeah, but I see that with you know I see that with a, a lot of the artists. You know, I have a lot. Look, of, look at Judy. Yeah, Judy's doing her thing. She's doing her thing, man. You know, I gotta I give up. I, I gotta give her props. Yeah, and and you know, and that's the thing. I think Karina even went out there and tried to do her thing. Yes. You know, I and and, and I've always. Encourage people. I, I've said that. On and look this at Cynthia. She's like the freaking Madonna. She's yeah. always changing herself. You know, yeah. she's always reinventing yeah. herself. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. I like that about. Yeah, her. and I brought that up before, and I've yeah. told I've told a lot of people, even people who are interested in the genre, and yeah. they're like, "Well, I don't sing or I don't produce." I'm like, "Well, you know what? Maybe there's something else that you have that you can do that that can mesh with the genre yeah. because it's yeah. like hip hop. We yeah. we put out the first cologne based on the freestyle yeah. genre. The idea that I got right. came from the hip hop community. Right. I still remember I was buying oh, the Sean John look stuff. Look at Junia with the health. She always knows what you have to do for everything. And and Shannon. You know? And Shannon. Trunia. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Shannon, Shannon, I like to follow because Shannon's she's a little older than us. And, and but you know what I love yeah. about Trunia? Like, she actually She'll put it together, show you what it is, and, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't look like it's gross. Like, yeah. it looks like, you know, I can drink that. Yeah. You know, I can, yeah, yeah. I can get down with that a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she doesn't, like, take it to extremes. That's what I love about Trinia. She yeah. doesn't take it to extremes. Yeah. You know? What I love about Shannon is she makes it fun. Yeah. Like, when she's talking about it, she seems so excited about it. She makes she, she you excited a, about it. She put a bow. She goes, okay, guys, make sure you eat your greens. And I posted uh. it. I said, I said, the green, uh, uh, 
um, gummy bears count? <laughs> <laughs> so, because I don't eat greens. <laughs> but, oh uh, but, 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 you know, I've mentioned that to a lot of people, and I yeah. said, you know, just like the hip hop community, you know, they yeah. went out and they started, look at, look at Mario did the wine. Yeah. Okay. This is the idea. This is what I'm trying to say, you know, right. is to he has a passion. So you don't have to be a singer. You don't have to be a producer. You know, if there's something else you have, he took a wine. He has a passion for wine and he, he brought it into, into this whole, you know, freestyle thing. He made it, you know, specifically and he consulted with me. So we worked together. And he's such the, a good person. He's a good person. He you deserves know, success. He, he deserves success. Yeah. Thank he definitely you. deserves yeah. success. You know, so many of the freestyle artists deserve success because yeah. really and truly, you know, we were on the top of the charts, man. Yeah. They just pulled the rug out from us, man. Well, I think you it was know? bad leadership. And it, you know what? It was, yeah. It was bad all around. Like, we were kids. We didn't know the business. But that's what it was. What it was is the, it was the leaders didn't know. You know, you're following people that don't really know. But they weren't that older than us either. You right, think about exactly, it. yeah. So, you know, I can't even blame them. Yeah. You know, I, I basically just, it was just hard and it was a sad situation. And, you know, at this point in our lives, we just got to say, you know what? It's what happened. You know, we still have our fans. Yeah. We still have so many people that love our music and love everything about us. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can do anything at this point. Yeah, well, Be anything. Do that's anything. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot. Listen, for many years, since the beginning, you remember, I came into this whole idea of music wanting to be an artist. That was my dream. That was my passion. Anybody who knows me mm -hmm. the past 20 years knows. That was my thing when I was rapping, writing, whatever the case, which is how I even got working with with little Susie was right. you know as an artist I was on stage right. you know opening up for shout her. out to Tony Casal yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> alright so wait 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 we're getting a refill here, here. refill you drinking more I gave more. you a little mm -hmm. bit come on man that's it you're not allowed to drink you know that but I'm not driving right now <laughs> and it's the 100th episode so okay okay <laughs> enjoy but anyway what I was trying to say is you know, I came I stepped into this business oh, as okay. a I don't, I don't want to cut you off. I don't want to cut you off. Because what you're saying is so freaking important. But I do got to give a shout out to Mari who's from Sweet Sensation. Because do you see the food that this girl posts? Yeah. She makes me hungry every time I see her freaking food. Yeah. You know? Yeah. She's just an incredible artist in so many ways. Not mm -hmm. just as a singer, just as a performer. But, I mean, everything she's doing. Yeah. No, they, and they, raising a beautiful family at the same yeah, time. Yeah. No, her and her husband are definitely a dynamic hey, duo. Hey, yeah. Hey, man. My twin. Yeah. That's my that's my my Capricorn twin. Yeah, they're definitely a dynamic duo. They are. Remind uh, me a little bit of us, you know, back to back. You know, back to it, back. That's right. They duke it, it out, man. They duke it out with anybody. Right. Back. But to but back. what I was trying to say, where I was trying to go was was uh, you know I came in, you know, as an artist, mm -hmm. and ended up behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And what was so crazy? As much as I love the business, I love being behind the scenes because I love the art I love the business the art of business I just mm -hmm. I love it I love creating stuff out of nothing however I did take my that artistic thing that I've had for as far back as I can remember you know I didn't just start writing and, and you know this stuff back you know what I mean I've been doing this my whole life this has always been my dream you know mm -hmm. I ended up figuring out okay well you know what nobody's signing me as a single or a rapper but you know what somebody's gonna sign me you know I'm gonna wind up signing because somebody. I don't think you were auditioned enough because boy you could blow yeah yeah you no. could sing well I had a little you know and you can rap I had a little bump in the road so that kind of put me but the uh, the ability to me but it to, wasn't because you weren't good enough no but what I'm trying to say is you said it was a bump in the road There's what I'm trying to yeah what I'm trying to say is now all these years later I finally have an opportunity thanks to also to social media and you know some of the technology that I can now express my art I can release some of that artistic shit I got inside me you know you know I mentioned before I mentioned before about um, um, about speaking in public you so I wrote it on the post you know yeah you know so I'm, I'm fascinated by speaking I love speakers but I have a problem speaking but the podcast however but is what first do I always tell you just go out there and speak. You're out there for a couple of seconds. It's all gonna go. The nervous. I done it. It all didn't go away. go away. It does go away. I did it. It does I go did a away. Couple, I did a couple no. of words. I did. No, you know why? Because you didn't. You didn't figure out what you were gonna say before you got on. You winged it. I, I don't. I didn't know what I was gonna say on the podcast. That's different. There's a podcast. Nobody's in front of you. But if you go in front of a whole bunch of people and you wing it, brother, you're winging it. You're not preparing. Yeah. Well. But if you prepare and you go out there. 
You know, I'm a chick that wings it. No, I think what it is with me, I think I just have to do it a few times. Because remember my first couple, even you said it. My first couple podcasts, you was like, yeah, a lot of ums, uh, uh, uh. No, papi, I never said that. No, no, yes, you did. You did. No, but it was was real. I said that's what I liked about it. No, it was too much. Because it was real. It didn't look like you were taping it in a rewind. No, I wasn't. It was real. I I vowed not to do that. But that's what was real about it. That's what I told you I liked. But what I'm trying to say is now, look, all these episodes later, it's a little more smoother. I'm able to, you know, communicate. Now, I believe that that's the same thing that can happen if I ever took it to the stage. I'll probably, you know, bump it to the wall a few times, mm-hmm. you know, and then hopefully everything will clear up. Right. You know? But we, what I'm trying to say now is, is, and this this is, I'm saying this really because there's a lot of people who are either artists or producers or in the in the business or want, or always wanted to be in the business or the fans. And to say that there are, there's a lot of avenues to get involved in this genre. But not only a lot of avenues, they're actually talented enough to get into these avenues. No, I'm talking about even fans. You know, fans who, who you know, who, you know, have a great idea. You know, right. that, that that have a skill or a talent. That, what do I say? I always say about Miguel, yeah. Felisa, yeah, yeah, Jerome. Just, there's so many fans. Um, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Kidd. They, yeah. They, they, they're such deep fans, man. Yeah. They're deep-rooted fans. Yeah. And they know this business almost better than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, you know, they yeah. rather they know this music almost better than anyone yeah. else. Yeah, oh no, there's a there's a there's a lot. I got yeah. I get you know, I get people that hit me up on YouTube all the time, and I, I yeah. try to do what I can to console, and I try to find out. And I tell them, listen, just listen, just listen to what I have to say. Just check out my blog. You know who you know who's so freaking deep is Rudy Maestas. Do you see how he remembers shit that I said like 20 years ago? Yeah, and he'll post it. I'm like, oh my god. I can't believe he remembered that. Yeah. You yeah. know, I've said that in passing. I've said it like in really weird situations. But I mean, How did you remember that? What we need, you know, and that's what we need. You know, I mean, yeah, listen, yeah. right now, man, look at where the genre is at. Like we, you know, we, none of us, forget about financially could afford this. Time-wise, we couldn't really afford this shutdown. Even though it, it might, there might be a good end, there might be a good side to this. Because it gave us a lot, a lot of us a chance to think. Think about how artists, you know, we have, we've been fortunate. We made a couple of smart moves in the past, so we were I'm able. I have to be real. You came up with those smart moves. Okay, but no, no. But what sometimes I'm... I just wanted to buy some boots and shoes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, but I'm, what, I, I, what I'm, I'm trying an to. Honest person, you know. But that. what I'm trying to say is, is, is. But 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 you know what it is with me. I know who to follow. Yeah. I know what leader to follow. Let's put right. it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. So you could lead and I'll follow because I know to follow you. There's a difference. No, but what I'm saying, think about, you know, some of the artists, what I'm trying to say, some of the people, the artists, maybe that really, really relied on the shows, really just the show, because there's right. no record sale money right, right, happening out right. there. Nobody's really getting any Nobody real in the world royalties. is really selling records yeah. at this point. Yeah, you know, free stuff, yeah. forget it, you know? No, but anything. Who's selling records? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a handful, but it's not that many. Are they really selling records? There's a there's a handful. There's a handful that are streaming, and they get, they're getting their... They're getting I don't them. think they're getting that much. No, they're not getting... It's not like it you was. You maybe got, what, how, 10, 10x making any money? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a handful. That's yeah. a, that's a hand, maybe two handfuls. But what I'm trying to say is, is um, a lot of people might be looking at the situation right now and saying, oh, shit, what do I do? Like, if this doesn't fix itself, how am I getting paid? But you know what's so crazy? Do you realize the last show that we did, I said... I actually said, I never know when it's going to be my last show. Yeah, I That's why I always want to have a good time and I always want to do a great show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always want to meet every fan and, yeah. you know, yep. you never know what's going to happen in life. Yeah. But what's so sad is a lot of these artists, they, they seem lost. They yeah. seem lost at this point. They don't realize you're so freaking talented. You have this fan base. You know how many people wish they had a fan base? Yeah. You actually have a fan base. Yeah. I, You know, I, I write books. I tell a lot of people, I say, listen, I can't write for you. I can't write a book for you. But I'll tell you whatever information you need. Whatever I know, I'm not going to claim to be an expert. All I can claim is that, hey, I've done it. I did it. Exactly. You know, so I maybe did. I can, I can, you know, kind of show you this this route, you know. Yeah. The podcast, okay, you know what? I'm not an expert, 
but you know what? I did it. I know what to do. Right. And then we're doing the, the, the podcast later on that we're going to do once this is all done. Why are you telling people everything I'm doing? You know, I keep everything quiet what I'm doing. Oh, well, no, I've spoken about it before, you know? Ah, that's going to be dope, right? Yeah, that's going to be nice. <laughs> so, you know, but what I'm trying to say is that is, is you know, I'm hoping that people people see this and and realize that this is some real shit. You know, we never thought, ever... Uh, you know, first thing we thought, oh wow, yeah, if something like that ever hit hit the United States, the government will step in and stop it immediately. And look at this. I never thought it was going to be like this. Yeah. But I've always thought, hey, what happens if there's never another show? Remember? I yeah. always felt that way. Maybe because it was hard for me no, to no, think no. there was never. There's always going to be no, some sort of show. I think you'll be because, performing to your ninety. Only 90s. because what I've gone through, you know. Where people have said, okay, I'm a blacklist you. You're never going to perform. You're never going to do this. You're never going to do that. You're never going to sing your songs. You know, you know, only because of what I've went through. Right. I'm always going to feel that way. I'm always going to feel like somebody's going to pull the rug out from under me. The only right. reason I don't, I'm not scared about that anymore is because I know I have you. Yeah. You know? But think about it. I went through that for a lot of years. Yep, yep. You know? Yeah. Am I ever, am I going to be able to perform? Am I going to be able to sing my song? But even us now to... with this, with, with, you know, with what's going on, you know, we, we have to... You know, we're not superior. You know, we got we we're, we're okay. We protected ourselves, but we still we there's still a mountain to climb. Listen, you know me, brother. I will always do what I gotta do. Yeah, as not, long as it's legal. Right. No, know? no, no. Well, yeah, and I think everybody, anybody who's listening, is gonna do whatever they have to do. But the thing is, what is that? What, see, what, see, the you thing know is, what is, I'm following your lead because you've always done creative things to make money. Right. So I've always seen all the creative things you've done to make money. Right. So I'm like, huh. Right. So we're not really talking huh. about, right. So we're not really talking about us. I'm talking about a lot of people that are just sitting home waiting for the doors to kick back open so they can go and start doing shows. Well, they need to call me because, you know, I'm a great cheerleader. So I can push them in the right direction and cheer them on. And they'll be fabulous. Do it. I'm know? talking about the artists who rely only on this. I don't believe that no artist doesn't rely on their shows. What? I believe every artist relies on their shows for some sort of income. Absolutely. I that. Absolutely. There's so some. Then? There's some that have supplemental. There's some that have regular jobs and they perform. And then there are those that this is all they do. You gotta realize that. I know. I'm an agent. I know who's who. I know which ones do what. You know, this has to be a very well, that's what I'm scary saying. They need to take situation. Listen, take what we're saying. Mo- listen, most of these people are multi-talented. Yeah. I would have to say in the freestyle genre, people try and diss this freestyle genre. Most of the artists are multi-talented. Yeah. I've never seen so many people, and and and. It's not like they don't. It's like they. It's almost like they latch onto something and they learn it. Like they, they, they. It becomes part of their life, right, and they learn right, it. Right. Yeah. But they don't realize. It's almost like they don't realize. I can make a dollar doing this too. I can make a dollar doing this too. Yeah. I can make it. You know. Yeah. All those dollars add up. Yeah. You know, everybody could be good right now. Everybody cannot be good. All I'm saying is, for the people who are not good, I know you're multi-talented. All of you. Anyway, we're gonna shut down. Uh, it's about that time right now. Went over a little bit. Is it over already? Yeah, it's over already. So, got any last words you want to say? I just want to send a shout out to all the freestyle artists, and you know, I'm rooting for them, and I hope everybody's doing well. And you know, I'm a little heartbroken. I heard about Danny. Yeah. You know, with my man Vargas and. I always loved him and his brother so much, you know? Mm-hmm. And Nelson? We, and Nelson. But, you know, the Vargas brothers, we lived in the same building yeah. as kids. You know, we lived in the Butler house as projects. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little heartbreaking. Yeah. You know? Well, rest in peace, sir. Rest in peace. You know? You know? And thinking about Vic, you know, they were like always together. Those brothers were always together. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Anyway, guys, so listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Really appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Once again, it's the 100th episode of the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And um, stay safe. Definitely stay home. And until tomorrow night, Good Night Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. 
For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.